to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV, we have gotten a set of new short stories. These are being released post patch 6.4, so keep that in mind, there may be spoilers for any content before that. This is the first story. As Azure Fades Estinian Varleno was quickly discovering the potency of Hannah's spirit. Back when hunting dragons consumed his every waking moment, he had seldom partaken of drink. Indeed, he may well have abstained completely, were it not for the cajoling of a persistent friend. But having cast off the mantle of Azure Dragoon and taken to the road at the end of the Dragonsong War, he had been surprised to find that he rather looked forward to the reward of a drink in the evening. And this evening he had met his match in a new variety of liquor. More fire than water this. Trust an alchemist to concoct such stuff. He followed his first sip with a strip of dried squid. Supplied by a local fisherman, the savoury morsel was the equal of any he had tasted in the Far East. He served to set all his palate and he dared to drain his cup of the rest of the fiery liquor, his warmth spreading through his body as he reclined in his lavish chamber in Ratsatan. After the exertion of his quest to the very edge of existence, life in the city as the satrap's honoured guest suited Estinian well enough. Yet despite the lack of impending threat, he continued to train as diligently as ever. He had taken up the lands that he might avenge himself upon Nitok, for the murder of his family, and even having done so, found that a habit formed over a lifetime was not so easily shed. Thus did an old custom meet a new one, and after Estinian had trained to his satisfaction each day, he permitted himself an indulgence of a drink or two. But given the enthusiasm of the Hanish alchemist, only one was required on this occasion. He had scarcely savoured a second strip of dried squid when exhaustion and liquor swept over him like a tide. Gently, yet insistent, bearing him away to the land of slumber. Beyond the wail of his consciousness, in the depths of dream, he was fighting a dragon. The beast roared and he felt his unbridled rancor as plainly as the stirring of his own heart, thanks to the eye, the source of the Azure Dragoon might. He leapt high to avoid his opponent's snapping maw, twisting in mid-air as he channeled the dread orb's power into his lands. Then, like a blazing meteor hurtling from the heavens, he plummeted back down to the earth. The lands found his mark, piercing the seams of scales along the dragon's neck and sinking deep into the flesh, where it released its energy in a fiery explosion a shattered bone with a telltale crack. The great beast howled in agony, thrashing desperately to throw him off but it could not long sustain the effort. With a final shudder, it collapsed and moved no more. Another victory, he thought. He felt neither joy nor relief. Now, let us count the cost. No sooner had he set foot on the ground than the searing pain racked his chest, bringing him to his knees. Oh, worse than expected. While the eye lent him his strength, in harboring Nitok's undying malice, it was also slowly corrupting his being. Ere long it would finally consume him, leaving not but a vessel for the beast Stark's will, an untaught truth he knew to this very core. Silent worm! Though, little more than a whisper, his voice defiant served to staunch the pain. But words could not halt the eye's growing influence. The fit grew more frequent by the day and more intense. The hour is nigh. He slumped against the body of his fallen foe and closed his eyes. Just a moment's rest. He woke on the floor of an unfamiliar room. Furs laid under him tickled his cheek. Struggling to his elbow, he blinked his surrounding into focus. Battered stools crowded around sturdy tables and a counter spanned the length of the wall. The lingering scent of charred meat and mullet wine completed the story. This was a tavern. Father! A maiden voice rang out. He is awakened! The call was answered by a pounding footstep, and a brawny man well into his middle years burst into the room. Alone be praised! He said relief plain in his voice. How do you feel, Lord Haldrath? Astinius' mind reeled for a moment. Oh, this was a dream of the past. 
and he was experienced in events as Haldrath, one of Iskar's founding fathers. Together with the sire, King Thorden, he had slain the great worm Ratatoskra and later gouged out her brother's Nithog's eyes, whose power he had harnessed to become the first Azur Dragoon. As these memories rose up, he found he could remember the man regarding him with such worry. Sir Orenquart, I'm no sir, my lord. Haven't been for a while, Orenquart replied with a grin. Just the keeper of a tavern now, as you can see. Twenty long years ago, Aldrath has sworn to live out his days in exile as a solitary hunter of dragons. In the course of stopping for supplies in a nearby settlement, however, he had learned of Sir Orenquart de Corteloid's retirement for service and subsequent purchase of the establishment in which he now found himself. The news that one of their numbers had chosen a quiet life had come as something of a shock, but to behold his comrade in his new home, he could not help but feel assured. And neither am I a lord, my friend, be it yours or anyone else's. But tell me, how did I come to be here? A birth along my daughter, Orinquart replied, gesturing at the dark-haired maiden beside him. She found you lying next to a dead dragon. Father has regaled me with tales of your deeds ever since I was little, said Bertheline, her words tumbling out with ill-concealed excitement. You're an inspiration to me, my lord. Like you, I wish to protect our people from the Dravanian menace. She's bent on joining the Temple Knights, Orenquart interjected with a grunt. Nothing we say or do will dissuade her. As a matter of fact, she was out training with her lands when she stumbled upon you. As he gazed at Bertaline, Aldrath knew a twins of sorrow, for in her determined eyes he saw the fire that had once burned in his own, long since extinguished. My first thought was to seek the Temple Knight's aid, Bertaline continued, but you spoke my father's name in your sleep, so I brought you here instead. Well now, Aldrath grinned, what could fortune to be found by the daughter of an old friend? And not a friend of my fallen foe. Bertheline did not return his smile. Begging your pardon, my lord, it was more than a good fortune. A voice led me to you. A voice? Whose? I, I don't know, he conceded, frowning in the act of recollection. But I heard them in my mind and they sounded like storm winds. More than good fortune indeed. Aldrath looked to the heavens thinking the goddess alone for ordaining this meeting. At long last he had found the one whom he might entrust all. What you heard, Alfred began, was the will of Nitok. So speaking, he laid a hand upon his silver breastplate where a grotesque object had fused itself, one of the great worm's eyes pulsing with baleful light. His eye calls to those who seek power, to corrupt and conquer their minds, that he might be free once more. Then uh, maybe we should take you to the temple nice after all, Bertelin exclaimed, taking a step forward. The surgeon might be able to help you, Haldra stated her with a raised hand. It's no use, child, he said gently. It's already joined to my body, armor and all. When he took, could not claim my mind, he turned his attention to my flesh. And he will not be denied. Soon I will be a puppet. The revelation stunned both father and daughter into silence. Haldrath allowed them a moment before turning to look his old friend squarely in the eye. Ere I cease to be myself, I want you to end it. Anger flashed across Orinquar's face. You've lost your bloody wits if you think I'm going to kill you, he spat. Damn you for even asking! The earthfall knight had been wont to betray his low-born roots in a moment of passion, and Haldrath couldn't help but smile to see that years had done little to change him. It's no small thing to ask of you, I know, he continued, but were I left to become Nitok's thrall, I would deliver his prize unto him. And I need not say, what would befall should that come to pass? Sjorn, though the great worm of his full strength, he and his horde remained dire threat to his guard. Thus did the nation new ruler, the Archbishop, 
established the Temple Knights to lead the fight against dragon kind. Bolstered by the noble houses, the Order had managed to hold the wall so far, but only barely. If Nitok were to reclaim his eyes, he would visit untold devastation upon the Holy See. Damn it all, I swore an oath, Haldrath. To you, and you alone. That you did, and then we made our choices together. When we learned Nitok's mind, that he believed mankind were weak and unworthy, in order to preserve our sovereignty, we committed the grave sin of betrayal. Chose a path of blood for ourselves and our children both, and we cannot now turn back. Lo, though you have laid down the sword, your daughter has taken up the lance. To that, Arinquart could offer no reply, and so he stood there, jaws clan, staring at the floor. Haldrath turned his gaze to Bertaline, to you who would hunt dragons. Who did answer Nitok's call? I entrust his eyes. As custodian of their power, I charge you with protection of our people. Bertaline's eyes widened, their lips parting as if to speak, but Haldrath pressed on. Time was running out. So long as justice burns in your heart, Nitok will never claim your mind, yet your flesh will eventually succumb. Ere it does, you must find another to take up the burden and carry on the fight in your stead. Lest you forget, our enemy is nigh immortal. This war will rage on long after we have returned to dust. This much he managed before the pain seized him once more. Doubling him over somewhere beyond his stifled scream, he heard the cries of father and daughter desperate to help, but with no means to do so, save one. Do it, Arinquart, Aldra thrust. If your oath to me was to be true, I bid you end it now. Through the haze of agony, Aldra saw his old friend take up his faithful lands with trembling hand. The deadly point came to rest at the seams of his breastplate. But there it stayed, and as Haldrath beheld his old comrade, tormented it plain upon his face, he was struck by the true enormity of his request. He had extended the hand of fellowship to Orenquart, raising him up from ruffian to knight, and Orenquart had never forgotten the depth. He had rewarded Haldrath faith with absolute loyalty, and could no more harm him and he quit his own kin. Cursing himself, Haldrath sought for the word to compel his friend to do what his heart forbade, when Bertaline's voice rang out, Let me help, father. And without waiting for an answer, she wrapped her hands around the shaft of the lands, just below her sires. The burden of the sin I shall bear with you. The pair shared a solemn glance and Orenquart nodded with a look that was equal past sadness and pride. Haldrath managed to smile in spite of the pain. Thank you, my friend, my successor, and farewell. May the bloodshed come to an end one day, and our progeny know peace once more. With that, the mighty lands that had slain countless dragons plunged into his chest, impaling his heart and bringing an end to the dream. As Dinian woke with a start, a film of sweat had formed on his brow, and as he wiped it away, his eyes wandered to the fearsome halbert propped in the corner of his chamber, a weapon which bore the name of his nemesis, of all the things to show me. Once upon a time, he had taken both of Nitok's eyes in hand, and been possessed by the worm's vengeful spirit for his trouble. Could it have been the eyes twin once embedded in Haldrath's ageless corpse, which had given rise to the vision? Astinian shook his head. Why waste time wondering when the few who might feasibly know were long dead? Besides, it's over now. Rising to his feet, he walked to the window and opened it to let in the breeze. It took a thousand years, but we have peace again. Rest well, Haldrath. Outside, beneath the wail of night, Ratsatan shone resplendently at him in all his many colours.